Good morning, and welcome to the Basilica Parish of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Gospel and the first reading hold before us people who recognize God's goodness to them and give thanks. In the world around us, there are countless signs of God's goodness, beginning with our own faith and breath. There are also harsh realities that test our faith. We are called in the gospel to allow our thankfulness to celebrate God's gifts and also to heal us. Let our Eucharist today be truly a sign of thanksgiving. This celebration is for all of us, regardless of our age, orientation, race, whether we worship regularly or only when we can, whether we embrace the life of the church or are struggling to find God in the midst of it all. Jesus comes to all of us, saints and sinners alike this day. To spread this good news is the mission of the church, and we open wide our doors to all who come here to pray. Our Selvin for this Mass is Father Don Beyer. Let us lift our hearts in worship and praise as together we stand and join in our entrance hymn. <clears throat> Number 313 in your music issue, Gather Your People. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let us bring our prayer to the Lord our God as we call upon him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus, his Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. To prepare us to celebrate God's healing love among us, let us be mindful of our own faults, our failings, and our sinfulness, and ask the Lord to come to us with his love. Lord Jesus, you call to us to come to you in faith. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal and forgive us when we sin. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our way, our truth, and our life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to share the joy of life everlasting. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus, and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. 
Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. A woman named Linda, who was 30 years old and married for seven years to her husband Jim, were good and close friends to their pastor. <coughs> and they gathered together time after time in prayer because they were hoping to start a family. But for those seven years, nothing happened. One day, Linda comes to the rectory and talks to her priest, the pastor, and says to him, Jim has gotten a tremendous job in, in Chicago, and we have to move. And the pastor says to her, well, I'm going on a pilgrimage to Israel and I'll stop at the shrine of the birth of Jesus and light a perpetual candle for your family that it begins and continues to grow. Ten years later, that pastor is visiting Chicago and Linda invites him to come have dinner with their family, who has now grown and have five children. The pastor gets there and says how wonderful it is to be with them and how his prayer and the lighting of his candle in at the birthplace of Jesus really worked. And then he said to Linda, where's Jim? And Linda says, Jim's on a business trip in Israel, and he's going to stop at that shrine to the birth of Jesus and say thank you to Jesus, but also to blow out your candle. <laughs> Today's scripture centers on that theme of gratitude. We hear in the first reading how Nahum the Syrian showed the prophet Elisha gratitude. And he wanted to give him a gift, but Elisha wouldn't accept that gift. And so Elisha realizes how important faith is to the prophet. And Nahum realizes that it's through the prophet's faith in his God that Elisha was healed. And so Elisha, I mean Nahum, gives that beautiful gift of faith by recognizing and praising and glorifying the God of Israel. And the same is true in the story of the lepers. Ten are healed. One comes back and gives thanks. And Jesus says to them, or to him, where are the other nine? And if you think about that, we probably are the other nine. How much thankfulness is in our hearts? When's the last time that you said thank you to someone? It seems to have gotten to be lost in our society today. 
And yet there is so much for each one of us to sit down and to just think about and thank God for. To thank God for this beautiful day that we have. To thank God that we're able to come together as a Christian community, to be together, to praise and worship our God together, and thank God for the many gifts that he pours out on each one of us every single day. It's good to thank God for the week we had, whether it was a good one or a not so good one. It's all in God's plan. And so we have to realize that once in a while it's a very good practice to start saying thank you to God. Thank you to God for who I am, for the people I love, for the people who love me, and for all the things that we share in common, that we so often take for granted. Very often we hear people say, how lucky I am. There's a story about a young man who was invited, who was searching in his heart and mind and soul and body and everything else because he wanted to get a girlfriend, a new bride. And so he had been invited to a party, but he declined. And at the last minute, he decided to go. And there she was, Sally Special, the one who, just looking at her, stole his heart. And he said, how lucky I am that I went to that party. I would say it wasn't luck. It was God. And we hear so many stories like that. A woman was in a hospital not knowing what the cause of her illness was. And a visiting doctor happened to be coming through that hospital, and he found a diagnosis for her. And she said, how lucky I was that that doctor came through while I was there. Not luck. The answer to her prayers. God answers prayers. Each one of us, in many ways, are blessed. And that's something that we very often take for granted. It came, made me aware of it many years ago when a friend of mine let me use his condo in a resort in the Dominican Republic and then two other priests and myself went. And every time you said something to one of the Dominicans, whether it was the one mopping or sweeping the floor or serving the meals or making the beds, you'd say, how are you today? After saying, hola. They would say, I'm blessed. I thought to myself, here am I, who have many, many more things than they, and they're always saying, I'm blessed. And I probably rarely said it. But it's something for each one of us to think about, how God works in each one of our lives time and time again to remind us of who we are. 
that we are his children, made in his image and likeness. We're called to be like Jesus in everything, and we can be, except sin sometimes. But the life that each one of us shares is a life driven by God, not by luck. And the more we think about that, we can see how truly blessed we are. So take time this week to thank God for how beautifully you are made, how wonderful you are. Thank God for your spouse, for your children, for the work that you may love or not love, for the people in your life who you like and some you dislike, for everything that helps to bring happiness to your life, the antics of a little child, the doings of a special senior citizen that puts smiles on all of our faces. They're all gifts from God. Today, Jesus calls us together as his family. And he asks us to be thankful for who we are as Christian people. To realize that we've been called, that we've been blessed, that we've been healed, that God touches our life every single day in so, so many ways. And yet most often, we take that for granted. This morning, Jesus calls us to the table of the Lord to celebrate in Eucharist, a word which in Greek means to give thanks. And Jesus calls us to Eucharist to strengthen his life within us, to help us to be more like him, to be generous with our lives, our times, our talents. In a sense, to be grateful for all that God has given us. So we ask you during this week to maybe take some priorities in your life. The things that have helped you to become who you are and have helped you to grow the most in your life. Sort of think about them as a priority. Say thank you for each one of them and thank God for giving them to you. Please stand now. And let us profess what we believe by saying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, even one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As believers and disciples of Jesus, it is our duty to pray for others, especially those most need of our prayers. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our church, for Pope Francis and Bishop Berus, for all priests, deacons, women and men, religious life, lay ministers, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> During this Respect Life Month, let us pray for all those whose lives are at risk, for unwanted babies and unwanted elderly, for women and men on death row, for victims of human trafficking, for those in prison, and those on the fringes of society, for the least valued of our world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who can make a difference in public policy for the leaders of government and people who influence in business, in the media, and in healthcare. For all citizens who exercise their right to vote, to lobby, and to express their opinions, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are elderly or infirm, for those who suffer with mental and emotional illness, for those who feel less valued because they cannot keep up with others, for all the names listed in our bulletin, and in our parish book of intentions. For the people in Ukraine, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We remember those who have died, especially R.T. Mueller, whose funeral mass is this Wednesday, October 12th at 10 a.m., and Patricia Ann N.A., whose funeral mass is this Thursday, October 13th at 10 a.m. And for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. At this Mass, we pray especially for the people of the parish and Jane Fogarty, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, hear our prayers this day. Help us to live out those concerns we express in prayer so that we may love and serve those you have placed in our care. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. As we bring our gifts to the table of the Lord, please join in singing our offertory hymn number 586 in the music issue, We Are Many Parts.
Pray, my friends, that this hour's sacrifice will help to make each of us become more acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with this sacrificial offering, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through Jesus, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church 
spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus, who brings us together, be with each one of you. And let us share some sign of that. She's with you. She's with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing our communion hymn number 326 in the music issue, I Am the Bread of Life. The Body of Christ. 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 I am the bread the of life. The you of come to me, shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father the body of beckons, the body of and I will. And I will praise you on the last The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you Would you like to learn more about the Bible? A new program has begun here at Sacred Hearts. 
Learn to better understand the Bible, pray, and be inspired by the Word of God. See the bulletin today for more information. On Monday, October 10th, please join the Knights of Columbus for Respect Life Prayer Vigil at the Life Statue at 7 p.m. See the bulletin for more information. Are you interested in becoming a Eucharist <coughs> minister? A new training session will be held on Saturday, October 29th. Please contact Father Mike if you are interested. Friday Eucharistic Adoration takes place after our 9 a.m. Mass on Fridays. Come spend an hour with us to pray for healing, peace, and strength in our families. Please consider becoming a year-round friend and supporter of Sacred Hearts. Check out the bulletin to see, many, to see the many options for year-round giving. Our parish depends on your generous and consistent support. Thank you for praying together with us today. Each week, our bulletin is full of upcoming events and activities happening here at Sacred Hearts. Please take home a copy. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you, may you make us sharers of his divine nature, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just to thank you to our altar servers. It's good to have altar servers. I am very rarely at the 930, but I have the other masses quite frequently, which we don't have altar servers at, but we're working on it. So, but thanks to our altar servers today. to our lectors, our Eucharistic ministers, our ushers, our leader of song, our organist, I mean our pianist, and especially to each one of you for coming out to worship and pray with us this morning. I pray you have a celebrate this beautiful day, have a good Columbus Day, and a great week. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God continue to bless each of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, this Mass is ended. Please join in singing our Sending Forth Hymn, number 444 in the music issue, Blessed Be the Lord. Shall not fear the dark of night. 